everybody, Mrs. Bodishan here. So today we're going to be learning all about isotopes and we're going to be doing that with the help of the game Fortnite. So here's a clip from Fortnite. This is a really popular game right now. Pretty much everybody has heard about it, at least if you haven't played it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Fortnite skins to teach you all a little bit about isotopes and hopefully relate it to you in a way you'll understand. Okay, so in Fortnite, you get to choose your skin that you're using, or in other words, like the outfit that you're wearing. You can pick different colors and you can customize it. We're going to be talking about Spider-Man for our Fortnite character. Um, as you see, we have two different Spider-Mans on the screen. They're still just Spider-Man though, right? Um, but we went ahead and we customized the skin on each one. So this is more like the traditional Spider-Man, and then we have this black and red version of Spider-Man. However, they're still just Spider-Man. Isotopes, you guys, are the same way. So let me explain to you what I mean by that. An isotope just is the same element with a different number of neutrons, okay? So in this case, we have carbon-12 and carbon-14. In other words, they're still just carbon because really what is it that makes up an element? It's the number of protons. So if we look at this atom, the green dots are representing our protons. So we have six protons in carbon-12. We also have six protons in carbon-14. So it's still just carbon. However, it's gonna be a different isotope of that carbon. In other words, we're just kind of like changing one component of it, like changing the skins of our Spider-Man character on Fortnite. So let's think about really what that changes in our element then. Uh, if we have an atom with the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons, that is what an isotope is, okay? So we're changing the number of neutrons in our atom. So really, what does that change? It's gonna change our atomic mass, all right? So isotopes, they're the same element, different number of neutrons, and therefore they're gonna have a different atomic mass. So if we're looking at this example, we see we have three different Spider-Mans here. We have the original, um, this black and red version, and this white and black version. And this is gonna be hydrogen one, hydrogen two, and hydrogen three. So these are all isotopes of hydrogen, right? Um, now, what does this number at the end mean? This number at the end is representing the atomic mass of that particular isotope. So every single one is gonna have a different atomic mass because if you remember how to calculate the atomic mass, it's gonna be the protons plus the neutrons. Now, in order to find this, we can look at the periodic table. So here's a periodic table square for hydrogen, and you can see that in the upper right-hand corner, or sometimes it's even found right above the H, you're gonna see the protons, right? So the protons is gonna be one for hydrogen. So no matter which Spider-Man we're looking at, it's still Spider-Man. No matter which hydrogen we're looking at, it's still gonna be hydrogen because it has one proton, and that's what identifies the element, right? Now, in order to find the number of neutrons, we're gonna have to do a little bit of math. But I did want to point out to you really quickly that this bottom number is the atomic mass on the periodic table. And it has these decimals at the end, right? Uh, if you learned from my previous videos about isotopes, that that number just comes from the percentage of the isotopes that are in our universe, and they kind of average those together, right? So it's going to give you this decimal. In other words, it's not a whole number because as you can see, we have one, we have two, we have three, and each one of them occur in nature naturally at a different amount. So they take those amounts in consideration, compile it together, and get this roundabout average of what uh, the atomic mass would be for hydrogen altogether. We're not looking at that number when we're looking at isotopes, okay? We are gonna trust this N number as our atomic number in order to calculate our number of neutrons. So let's go ahead and look at this. So how do we find the number of neutrons? We're just simply going to do this math equation. The atomic mass, and we're going to minus the number of protons. Well, we know that hydrogen has a proton of one, right? Only one proton going on, and we know that our atomic mass is this end number. So this math, you guys, is really simple. So if you look at it, we're just going to do the atomic mass one minus the one proton gives us zero neutrons. So hydrogen one has zero neutrons. Hydrogen two, we're going to take that atomic mass two subtract it from our protons of one, and it gives us one. So this hydrogen has one neutron. And then hydrogen three, we take our atomic mass three, subtracted that, subtract that from our number of protons, which is one, and we get two. So this hydrogen three has two neutrons. Now you might be wondering, 
really what does that look like um, in a Bohr diagram? So here is what it looks like in comparison to each one. Uh, simply put, you're going to do your one proton each. So one green proton in the middle of the nucleus. And then um, hydrogen does have one energy level or shell. So go ahead and draw your one shell around each nucleus. And we're going to assume this is a neutral atom. So we're going to go ahead and put equal number protons and neutrons, uh, protons and electrons, excuse me. So we're going to draw that one electron in our energy level to make it neutral. And then we're going to focus on our neutrons. We already did the math to get our number of neutrons, and we found out that this one has zero neutrons. So there's nothing else we have to add to this Bohr diagram. It's finished. Now, the next one, we have to add one neutron, and the next one, we add two neutrons. Now, way to check your answer. You know that this number at the end here represents your atomic mass. So you want to make sure that everything in the nucleus adds up to how many you have as your mass, because they each equal roughly one amu, one atomic mass unit, right? So if I have one proton plus two neutrons, that gives me three, and I do have an atomic mass of three. Same thing here. I have one of each, so that equals two, and I only have one proton, and that equals one. So that's a great way to check your answer for isotopes. Now, if you want to learn how to do isotope notation, it's really simple, okay? You're going to write the atomic symbol, so in this case, H for hydrogen. The top number is going to be your atomic mass, so we're writing hydrogen 3, all right? So in order to write hydrogen 3, you take that atomic mass 3 at the end, and now you're just bringing it to the top left-hand corner. It's going to be a superscript. Now, your subscript below it is going to be your atomic number, and the atomic number, remember, is your number of protons, found on the periodic table, so in this case it's going to be 1. And that's all you have to do for isotope, isotope notation. So looking at this, we have our three different one, hydrogen 1, hydrogen 2, and hydrogen 3. Here's how we write the isotope notation for each, just to make sure we got it. So 1 is going to be our mass, and then our protons, and then 2 for our mass, and 1 for our protons, and then 3 for our mass, and 1 for our protons. Notice the one always stays the same because one proton identifies that it is a hydrogen atom to begin with. And the top number will vary because isotopes have different masses based on their number of neutrons. Going back to the first picture we looked at of the carbon 12 and carbon 14, I just wanted to show you the nucleus of these so that you could see and compare them now that you know a little bit more about isotopes. So you can see carbon on the periodic table is number six, and it does have six protons in each nucleus. Now what is changing is gonna be the number of neutrons, or the purple dots in this case. So you can see in order to make 12, if we had six protons, we would need to have six neutrons. And if you count them up, we surely do. Um, now carbon 14, in order for it to be 14, we would have to subtract six, so we would need to have eight neutrons. And if you count all those dots up, we indeed have eight neutrons. You all, I hope this is helpful in learning isotopes. All right, guys, so if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and click that like button and subscribe to my channel so you can see all the new videos that Science Explained is going to have coming out. Thanks everybody for watching. See you all later, bye.